geyser basins of Yellowstone. These are areas of almost natural wonders. These basins have evoked an aura of mystery long before Yellowstone became a national park. Indians who first inhabited this land referred to this place as water that keeps on coming out. This holds true today. Over 100 million gallons of heated water are expelled from these springs and geysers daily. A rarity of nature's handiwork, geysers are found in only a few places in the entire world. Conditions must be just right for them to exist. Of all the geysers in the world, two-thirds are found in Yellowstone. Here is the tallest of all geysers. Steamboat geyser, when active, is capable of raising a column of superheated water to heights of 380 feet or more. A single major eruption can expel hundreds of thousands of gallons of water. It's little wonder why the earliest reports of this area were regarded as nothing more than someone's wild imagination. John Coulter, while scouting for the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1806, heard stories of this mysterious region from Indians. He returned the following year to venture into the Yellowstone area. Coulter was probably the first white man to enter Yellowstone, but his descriptions of a hell-like area were not taken seriously. Mountain man Jim Bridger, already known for his tall tales, entered Yellowstone on a later date and confirmed Coulter's findings. But his reports of towering columns of water and boiling rivers were also regarded as too fanciful and fantastic to be true. In late summer of 1870, an expedition led by General Henry Washburn, Surveyor General of the Montana Territory, entered what today is known as the Upper Geyser Basin. One of their first reported sightings was Old Faithful erupting against the sunset sky. The following day, Washburn and his party went on to investigate and name many of the geysers of the Upper Basin. They saw the ruined tower of a fortress in this geyser, named it Castle. For its resemblance to an old-fashioned straw beehive, they named this Beehive Geyser. But the most important feature that the 1870 Washburn Expedition named was this geyser. So impressed by the regularity of its eruptions, Washburn called it Old Faith. But people were still reluctant to believe these astounding new reports. In 1871, an official government expedition led by Dr. Ferdinand Hayden entered the Yellowstone region. Accompanied by photographer William Henry Jackson and artist Thomas Moran, the wonders of Yellowstone were documented with undisputed proof. On March 1, 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the bill establishing Yellowstone National Park. Today's visitor sees a landscape that appears unchanged since the park's discovery. But on closer examination, this is an area of constant change, an area of dynamic geology and changing features. To better understand how geysers work and why they change, we'll explore Yellowstone's major geyser areas and examine different types of thermal features. No other place illustrates this constant change better than Norris Geyser Basin. This is the hottest, most dynamic basin in Yellowstone, if not in the world. Each year, new springs and geysers are born. Others go dormant. Chances are that these small springs no longer exist, but water will emerge somewhere else, forming new springs. On a larger scale, Pork Chop Geyser erupted only intermittently before 1985. But during the spring of that year, it became a continuous spouter, erupting non-stop from a two-inch wide vent. But Pork Chop was soon to go through yet another remarkable change. On September 5, 1989, Pork Chop Geyser exploded. Huge rocks were upended, 
Others were thrown more than 200 feet from its base. To understand the forces that power the geyser fields of Yellowstone, we need to examine elements deep within the Earth. The Earth's inner core is surrounded by the outer core of hot liquid magma, which is in turn surrounded by the mantle, and finally the thin surface crust. In Yellowstone, it is a unique geological feature known as a hot spot that is of special interest. These are sources of immense heat anchored within the mantle. About 600,000 years ago, a hot spot sent a column of molten magma toward the surface, forming a shallow magma chamber. As the magma chamber grew, it pushed upward into the crust, forming a large dome. Cracks formed around the edge of the dome, causing one of the most violent eruptions the Earth has ever known. With the removal of hundreds of cubic miles of molten rock, the roof of the dome collapsed, forming a 1,000 square mile crater, or caldera. Lava began to flow into the caldera and continued off and on for the next 500,000 years. It is this still active volcanic area that provides the heat source for Yellowstone's thermal features. Besides heat, two other elements are needed. The enormous amounts of water emerging from these hot springs and geysers today fell as rain and snow, some of it up to 500 years ago. It takes that long for some of the water to complete its cycle deep within the Earth and back to the surface again. The final required element is a suitable plumbing system, one that's capable of withstanding the extreme pressures needed to produce these plumbing. The young volcanic rocks that underlie the geyser basins are rich with the mineral silica. The rising hot water dissolves the silica and, as it cools, deposits it along the lining of the plumbing system. Over the years, it forms a sealed lining throughout the system, making it pressure tight. Above ground, this same gray-white mineral known as geyserite covers the surface of most of the geyser basins. Frequent splashing and depositing of this silica has built the cones that characterize many of the geysers. But just what makes a geyser erupt? By definition, a geyser is a hot spring characterized by an intermittent discharge of water. Within a hot spring, hot water rising in the plumbing system cools as it reaches the surface. Because cool water is heavier than hot water, cool water sinks back down into the system, forming convection currents. This constant exchange of water keeps the hot spring's temperature in check. Within a geyser, farther down in the plumbing system, there's a constriction. Hot water no longer is able to rise freely to the top, and cool water can't circulate back down. Water on top of the constriction now acts like a lid, holding in heat and gases. Water below the constriction heats to well above its normal boiling point until, at a critical point, a small amount of water is forced past the constriction and expelled at the surface. With the removal of some of the overlying water, pressure is reduced. Water flashes to steam. When this occurs, it expands to 1,500 times its normal volume, pushing the overlaying water up and out of the plumbing system, 